A child mummy is a rare artifact. Very few have ever been studied extensively. This child mummy is among the many treasures of the St. Louis Science Center. It was donated to the Science Center in 1985 um, by a man and a woman whose the, the woman's uh, great-grandfather had collected it around the turn of the century in, uh, when he went on a trip to the Middle East. Melinda Frillman is the manager of the St. Louis Science Center's collection department. She says the donors were told the child was a boy and from Egypt, but they had no scientific proof, only stories handed down over the years. The most fascinating thing about this is uh, the questions it raises, the mystery of where it came from. So what do we know about who this mummy is, where it came from, what age it lived in? This gift, wrapped in mystery, intrigued Al Wyman the St. Louis Science Center's Vice President for the Public Understanding of Science. To find out more about the child mummy, Al Wyman placed this ancient mystery into 21st century scientific hands. Well, I'm an anthropologist, and this is a little bit of a mystery, a little puzzle. Dr. Charles Hildebolt is a renowned anthropologist at Mallinckrodt Institute of Radiology at Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis. He assembled a team of detectives, including his colleagues in St. Louis, and Dr. Dean Falk, an anthropologist at Florida State University. The team worked closely with a mummy specialist halfway around the world, Dr. Salima Ikram, at the American University in Cairo, Egypt. I was sent a couple of pictures of the mummy, which is what ensnared me. It's very interesting because oh, we had, you had beautiful imaging, which was fantastic because it's rare that one gets such nice imaging done for a mummy. Based on computed tomography or CT scanning, Kirk Smith, a senior research engineer at Mallinckrodt Institute of Radiology, used medical computer software programs to create this incredible three-dimensional portrait of the mummy. Now we can start resolving the finer details that you know, in the past, would have, you would see maybe some blurry type images. Now we can get in, we can, you know, look at the fabric, and we can see the, the bindings that it was wrapped with, get in and, and really examine things. The CT-generated 3D model allowed scientists to electronically remove the linen wrappings to visualize the mummy itself without damaging it. We've been able to tell how it was prepared. You know, um, to confirm that, in fact, the brain was removed through the left nostril, which is typical of that period, that the internal organs were removed uh, through an opening in the left side of the body. Again, those two things go together. It's a bit unusual to see uh, children treated so uh, th this way, and so it probably it may have been a special child. The CT-generated models also allowed scientists for the first time to determine just how young this child was when he died. Seven to eight months of age. We base that on the, the teeth. The teeth are generally the best way of establishing age of an individual at the time of death. When determining the age of children, scientists also consider the growth centers where cartilage hardens or ossifies, becoming bone. When we looked at the whole skeleton, we also looked for the total number of ossification centers, and I believe that was between six and nine months of age. I also looked for secondary features, such as the soft spot in the brain. Is it open or closed um, on the skull? And that was still open, and that usually closes by about a year of age. The child mummy was wrapped in at least eight layers of linen bandages and a shroud. Samples were sent to Beta Analytic for radiocarbon dating a method for determining the age of ancient artifacts or fossils. The results, 95% probability the material dates between 40 B.C. and 130 A.D. The mummy was alive either at the very end of the Ptolemaic period or during the Roman per period. The Ptolemaic dynasty, which began with the conquering of Egypt by Alexander the Great, ended in 30 B.C. when Cleopatra killed herself after she and Mark Antony lost in battle to Octavian, Caesar Augustus. During this time, some Romans adopted Egyptian religious beliefs, so it's possible Romans also were mummified. The CT images also may have uncovered another surprise. The child mummy may have been buried with hidden treasures, tiny amulets or charms. 
amulets were put into um, ideal burials um, as protection for the dead, so that they not just protected the dead, but also helped the dead go on the journey from this life to the next. And the fact that this child has these amulets that are so carefully placed inside the wrappings means that he was, you know, obviously very well loved, um, well cared for, and his burial was an elaborate affair. And it also tells us about the religious beliefs being very firmly in place because obviously his parents thought that without these he would not achieve a safe afterlife. The amulets and the expense of mummification indicate the child was from a wealthy or upper-middle-class family. Scientists are hoping DNA testing will identify the child's ancestry. Dr. Ann Bocock, joint director of the Division of Human Genetics at Washington University, had extracted minute bone samples of the mummy. So what we learned was that the mummy's uh, mitochondrial DNA, which comes from his mother, uh, is what we call haplogroup H. Haplogroup H is very common in Europeans, um, but it is still conceivable that it could have been, uh, it, it could be a haplogroup that existed in ancient Egypt. So it's putting us in this part of the world, and now we're trying to, to, to definitively determine which part of the world that was. The, the problem for us is we don't know much about ancient Egyptian DNA, which wasn't the same as DNA of today's Egyptians. There's been changes in 2,000 years. There's no evidence of disease or injury in the skeletal structure of the child mummy. What caused this child's death remains a mystery for now. Well, I mean, certainly by having a child mummy, it's not unique, but it, they aren't as common, and certainly no one's done as much work on them. And so the St. Louis Center is, in fact, at the forefront of um, child mummy studies, which is quite an achievement. I'd say it's been a lot of fun, yes. It's been a great project. Uh, I wish you had some more mummies, but I guess you're, you don't.